Welcome to Comic Con! It's the first day, Thursday, of Comic Con, yay! And I'm finally going to reveal what I am. So I'm not wearing any shoes, so I'll wait, and I'm, I'm missing one item, so I'll wait until that dries. But I can at least show you my backpack. Instead of having a regular backpack, I decided to make one. Now do you know what I am? If you're a gamer geek, you do. This is as good as it's gonna get, basically. That was cool. That was just some stuff falling in my shower. Um, I'm waiting for my Mercy sign, which I made, which looks really cool. Let me show you. It looks like this. I'm gonna have it glued, or not glued, but pinned to my shirt. I'm waiting for the pins to dry with the super glue, which I got all over my hands. You can see that, yeah. Uh, so then I can go. And I really want coffee in the coffee places next door, but I have to wait for this stupid thing to dry. This is the second one, that's so why I can go like this a bit. But yeah, uh, here comes Comic Con. Welcome to day one of Comic Con. Ta da! Ta da! -da. I entered the artist gallery on accident, but I want to go find Orphan Black memorabilia, so that's where I'm going. Look, it's Chewbacca! BBC America! Now I can get my, my Orphan Black shit and then get on with the fun. I don't have any Orphan Black shirts this year. Powerpuff Girls? How cute. So basically, I just ran into Paul Amos, who um, a long time ago I went to the Santa Barbara Film Festival to see one of Jeremy Lalonde's films, who is a Canadian filmmaker. The film was, I can't remember the name of it, that's terrible of me, but it was really good. I'll put the link to it like here when I remember what it was. But anyways, after the film, a bunch of us went to the bar and got like pretty drunk. Some people left, some of the actors left, most of the actors left, and it pretty much remained Jeremy, the producer of the film, Ryan, the editor, and Paul, and this other girl, and we all got really, really drunk. And so I just saw him getting autograph signed because he's in that show Lost Girl. I don't think it's on anymore. Um, but yeah, I just ran into him and was like, hey, what's up? I haven't seen you in a while. Do you remember me? And he did remember me, so that was pretty funny. That's my story. Uh, I don't know, Thank you. I got my Power Rangers. So this is Boom Comics. Online. If you do not read their shit, you should. Boom Comics. Boom. Prism Comics, another comic company that you should be looking into. So I'm Faith Chaldam, president of Binet USA, and I'm here with the Buy Stories Project, right? This is uh, binetusa.org slash buy stories. It's the first national survey of discrimination of the fee and LGBT. That's bi, pan, fluid, queer, unlabeled, bi plus people, non monosexual, pretty much everybody who's like labelless or has label full. So we're basically having this project to have uh, people share their stories, including people who love buy folks. Right, like friends, family members, chosen family. We're asking them to share their stories too, and folks might get chosen to go to the White House and talk about it uh, and share their story with the national media. That's awesome. If you didn't know this about me, I read way too much. I have like eight books sitting on my dresser right now that are halfway read that I need to finish, and yet here I am looking at more books to maybe buy. Why do I do that to myself? And I was just sitting here, mind my own business, taking a little rest when uh, these freaking people came up to me. Hi. It's Bridget. <laughs> what the hell? How did that happen? She just like randomly found me sitting here on the ground. Look at we her. We just found her. Look, that's a great costume. Thank you. Multiple Batman. How is that possible? Wait, one of them's a Batwoman. The amount of photos people take with Bridget annoys the shit out of me. Just want everyone to know that it's annoying! 
We're following Jeff around because he's an artist and he wants to look at all the art now. So we're in Artist Alley. Look at stuff like this. And I'm getting footage of Bridget's butt.
when it did happen, we were usually villains or psychos or, you know, morality tales. Um, so to have, in 2016, to have, you know, a lesbian character get killed off immediately after having sex is a real kind of slap in the face and a throwback to, you know, kind of these pulp fictions where everyone, anyone that was gay or, or aberrant had to be punished in some way. And it's not just uh, the hundred that, <laughs> that this happens. There's been like 155 different queer female characters that have been killed uh, like over the past several years in television, um, and especially in you know geek culture, comic book culture, there's been such a rash of just characters getting killed for no reason. And and it's yeah, I mean, dating back to Tara was the original heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah. Poor one out of Tara. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you know, and I think, and I love Jess Whedon, obviously I'm a big Buffy fan, but I feel like people saw that episode and were like, oh no, we'll kill our gays too, and it'll be okay, because it'll be poignant and like, you know, it'll be a really emotional thing. But Tara's death served a very specific purpose for the end of season six. Like there was a reason, you know, narratively in terms of the show, it's what kickstarts Willow into Dark Willow, and you're building on something where the tracks have been laid for the entire season, possibly beyond. So in a sense, that's killing your gaze done like in the best possible way where, oh, this feeds the narrative story, and if they treat it as a dev and it's a devastating episode, and the episodes that follow, it's not like next week everyone's fine, like next week everyone is devastated. But we see there's it's honestly countless shows, Empire, The Walking Dead, The Hundred, um, Orphan Black, although like not not so much. Earth and Black was like, aha, just kidding. <laughs> Our gays are fine and they're going to cuddle and bend their underwear and you're going to love it. Um, <laughs> but it keeps happening on shows and I feel like, fam you know, we've waited so long to get a seat at the table, you know, at this big pop culture table and they're like, we've got a seat for you, but it's covered in dog shit and it's lit on fire. <laughs> we're like, why? Like, why can't we just have queer characters? And even like, you know, Orange is the New Black was another extremely devastating uh, queer character that, that is really sending ripples through the community. I mean, it's, it's a real punch to the gut, and there's a lot of thought pieces and essays about it online that are more articulate about it than I'm going to be. Um, but uh, we can talk about it after the panel, if you like. And just one more thing, guys, Ghostbusters, what's up? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that concludes Thursday's Comic Con trip. I hope you enjoyed it. Tomorrow, Friday's uh, Friday's trip will include more panels, most likely. I think. I think I scheduled more panels. Um, and Christine will be there earlier. I'll be there earlier. I have some like geekier panels to go to and some sci-fi panels that I want to go to, like, uh, things that... Oh, Orphan, Orphan Black is tomorrow. That's really exciting. If you're new to my channel, um, I basically make vlogs, collaborations, geeky videos, underground gaming videos, weekly vlogs, whatever strikes my fancy at the time, and, uh, that's kind of it. So if you are interested in any of that, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're already a subscriber, uh, like the video, leave a comment if there's anything at Comic-Con that you'd like me to check out for you if you are unable to attend, and I will do it. I promise you, I'll do it. And. Unless it's a panel that conflicts with my my panel schedule that I made because I'm crazy and do stuff like that. Um, but anyways, yes, please subscribe, like, comment, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.